Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters who are joining us online uh, to the Show Me God ministry presentation for tonight. I know it may be morning in other places. Welcome. Feel free to interact with us. Would love to know where you are watching from, which country. God bless you so much. Tonight we have a, a very important message that is going to touch you to the core of your heart and bless you. My name is Evangelist Anya Tanga, speaker and director of the Show Me God ministry. Our topic for tonight is exciting. It's simply entitled, The Call to Country Living. The Call to Country Living. Shall we bow our heads and invoke the presence of the Lord in prayer? Our Father art in heaven, we are so thankful for yet another opportunity that you have given us to know your will concerning these last days. We pray that you may bless our friends who are watching online in different countries. Lord, may you enrich them spiritually and bless them and keep them safe from the pandemic that is ravaging the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The call to country living. Friend, did you know that it was never the will of God that his people should live in big cities, crowded cities, piled on top of one another in flats, packed like sardines? Discover with me tonight the plan of God. Discover with me in this presentation the plan of God concerning where we should be dwelling, especially in these last days. The argument is based on the Bible and the spirit of prophecy counsels. God bless you so much. Let's go. God designed the Eden home for the first human family, Mr. Adam and his wife. The Bible records... In Genesis 2, verse 28, let's read together. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. God did not put Adam in a palace. In fact, before Adam was created uh, with his wife Eve, God prepared their dwelling their home. The Genesis account tells us that God planted a garden. He put there beautiful trees, fruit trees, beautiful orchards. And then God put the rivers that ran through the Garden of Eden. And uh, there were beautiful flowers, multicolored flowers. And the animals were there, the insects, the birds, it was so beautiful, a home, lovely sights and sounds were in that garden. Ideal and typical for promoting health and wellness. The air there was so pure from the plants which invigorate, which was designed to invigorate Adam and his wife to enjoy good health. God designed the Eden home to be a model home for the, hum for the human race. The Bible teaches us that God loves nature. He designed the garden for Adam and Eve to dwell there. Genesis 2 verse 9 says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree, that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I want you to imagine the scenery in Eden, the canopy of green trees, beautiful. The tree is laden with beautiful fruit from the orchard for Adam to eat. God even designed the rightful diet for men to eat plant-based foods full of roughage, 
promoting health, cleansing the system. This is the desire of God for every family, and this is what God intended men to eat. And had men obeyed this plan to this very day, our homes could be simpler and uh, could be brought closer to nature in an environment ideal to hear the still small voice of God. We would be living uh, close to God, communing with him, fellowshipping with him. You see, the Lord told Adam and Eve, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. The plan of God was not that Adam and the whole human race should be crowded in the Garden of Eden. The descendants of Adam were to spread throughout the earth or to scatter throughout the earth. God's idea is not that human beings should crowd together in one dwelling place. God has a model that we ought to follow. There are blessings I mean, connected with obeying the Lord. Genesis 1.28 says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. We've just explained that one. It is very important to go back to the Eden model. Now, it says here, from the book, Ministry of Healing, page 363 to 365. It was not God's purpose that people should be crowded into cities, huddled together in terraces and tenants. The more nearly we come to, into harmony with God's original plan, the more favorable will be our position to secure health of body, mind, and soul. The pain of inspiration commenting on God's, God's design in Eden. It was never God's plan that people should be crowded in cities. Never. Multiply, fill the earth, scatter around, don't crowd in Eden. That's the model. But today, what do we see? Rebellion and opposition to God's original plan. She says it was never God's plan that these people should be crowded in cities, huddled or piled together in terraces. I used to wonder what the terraces are until it dawned to me that she was talking about the flats, the skyscrapers, 15-story buildings, or 18 or higher. There are even uh, uh, buildings with 102 floors going up and families piled on top of one another. It was never God's plan that his children should live in that order in terraces, the way to scatter and fill the earth, and God gave us a model in the Eden home. When people are crowded in flats, 30 or 40 or more stories going up there, thieves in one floor, adulterers in another, drunkards, robbers, all juxtaposed together. That is not God's ideal, especially for his people. It's very important, friend, that you study the plan of God for your family. Especially does it make sense in, a, in these very last days. Stick around with us in this presentation and discover something that's going to bless you and you are going to see things in a different way. It was never God's plan for people to crowd in cities. Check the Eden home. I want to read again the book, Country Living, page 6. It says, The physical surroundings in the cities are often a peril to health. The constant liability to contact with disease, the prevalence of foul air, impure water, um, impure food, the crowded, dark, and healthful dwellings are some of the most, sorry, are some of the many evils to be met in big cities. The chances of diseases breaking out where people are crowded together is very high as compared to living in places where people are not crowded. 
Friend, you and I are witnesses today of the terrible pandemic that is going on around the world. It is more prevalent in crowded cities. That is where people are juxtaposed, the sick, the healthy, and in urban areas as compared to the uh, Edenic home. There is danger of contacting diseases in its various forms. Impure water. Some cities actually drink recycled water. Sewer water recycled for human consumption. How do people enjoy health under these circumstances? It was never God's plan for people to crowd like that. In some cities, the refuse is not collected regularly. The air is poisoned with impure smells that bring disease to those who inhale such terrible air, type of air. Compare this with God's plan in Eden. Adam breathed pure air from the trees that surrounded him. In a flat, there are no trees. In a flat, there is no garden to work and exercise. Today, we understand it better under the circumstances that we, the world is in. Some cities today have more than 2 million or 5 million or 10 million people crowded in one place. The earth is in rebellion to God's revealed plan. Blessed are those who look at the God's Edenic plan for and set up their homes, modeling the Eden standard of God. The air is impure, crowded, and healthful dwellings. And so plague after plague is starting in big cities. And the people eventually die from terrible infections. I want to draw your attention to what God has taught us and how many have rebelled from time immemorial to this very present day. I'm going to talk here about the Tower of Babel. When men sinned, Adam lost Eden. Uh, his descendants started to rebel against God. And so in Genesis chapter 11, we read, After the flood, Noah got out of the ark, God said, Fill the earth, multiply, and cover the earth. The spirit of rebellion came upon men, and Genesis 11 verse 4 says, They said, Come now, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Rebellion. When God said from the ark, guys, Spread and scatter around the earth. Do not crowd in one place. God wanted to reestablish his Eden model for human homes. But men rebelled and they agreed to build the Tower of Babel, a huge skyscraper reaching unto the heavens. For the people in those days lived up to 900 years. They were geniuses, men of powerful intellect. They put their genius together to rebel against God, and they decided to build this city with a gigantic uh, skyscraper going up there, and they wanted to dwell in that flat in opposition to God. They said, lest we be scattered. But God said, scatter. And uh, God came, was concerned, and he looked at the, at the tower. You know, you know the story? Then God confused their language. They could not understand, and eventually they were forced to scatter. Today, men are erecting towers of Babel in a rebellion again. Thousands are piled on top of one another and crowded in large cities. And uh, imagine people living in flats upstairs and the sewer system is blocked. Consider the unhy unhygienic conditions under which people live in. And the uh, children have no space to play and the danger of contracting disease, crime, prostitution under those circumstances. It was never God's plan, dear friend, that men should crowd uh, in cities and live in terraces or flats as we see today. 
Some are going into big cities to make a name for themselves as the antediluvians. These people say, let's make a city and a name for ourselves. There are people who have left humble dwellings with families and headed for great cities where there are millions crowded together. And there they have forgotten God and there they've exposed themselves to risk and uh, the Lord has not been honored. It's important for us to revisit the, uh, the Genesis model as God put a home for Adam and Eve. The sounds and the sights in big cities do not draw attention to God. They draw attention to the architecture of man. The sounds and sights in big cities, they disturb man from hearing God's still, small voice. And so God is never intended for his people to dwell in crowded cities. I will read a commentary there uh, 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 from the pen of inspiration. Ellen White writes, Country Living, a book called Country Living, page 14. It says, It is Satan's purpose to attract men and women to cities. And to gain his object, he invents every kind of novelty, amusement, every kind of excitement, and the cities of the earth today are becoming as the cities before the flood, which were destroyed by God. Did you hear that, friend? It is Satan's purpose to attract men and women to cities, to live in crowded places, in terraces. It is not the divine plan, says the pain of inspiration. It's high time you and I believe the testimonies of God and his word. He says, now in those cities, the devil will preoccupy men's minds and divert them away from Christ and the second coming and the sober duties of life to prepare for the soon coming of Christ and the end of probation. He provides in cities novelty, pleasure. There are many pleasure centers in cities than in countrysides. These pleasure centers are deceiving youths and corrupting their morals. There is much amusing pl amusement places in the cities, movie theaters, discotheques, so many eating houses. People can eat around the clock. I tell you, the devil is at war with us while we are asleep. Those who are raising families in big cities are losing their youths to problems associated with the city life with crowding, there there is drug addiction, which is rare in the countryside. God never intended for people to live crowded in big cities. Five million people in one city, 10 million people in one city, assorted characters, and this corrupts the family and corrupts spirituality. There are horse racings, soccer games, the devil is binding people to amusements while the prophecy clock is ticking away very fast. Satan wants to die with as many as possible, to deceive as many as possible. The Bible says, be sober and be vigilant. For your enemy, like a roaring lion, is seeking somebody to devour. Some families and their children have been devoured by city life. The youth are idle in the streets pursuing pleasure, movies. There are brothels in the cities. There are red, uh, red light zones in the cities where prostitution is rife. These centers are hardly found in the countryside. God never intended that his people should be crowded in cities. Receive this message with humility. There are some people who want to resist this message and claim to be God's people. If you doubt the testimonies and the plain teachings of the Bible, ask yourself if you are in line with God's will. It's high time we reconsider our ways and ask God to be merciful for us because the cities of this world have almost become like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to talk about it. Every uncouth thing, she says, the cities of this world have become hotbeds of vice and sin and crime. That these cities 
are going to be judged by God and already the judgments have started. Country living, um, I read, I continue. It says, but it is not God's will that his people shall settle in cities where there is constant turmoil and confusion. Their children should, sorry, their children should be spared from this. For the whole system is demoralized by the hurry and the rush and the noise of the cities. Um, the Lord desires his people to move into the country where they can settle on the land and raise their own fruit and vegetables. And where their children can be brought in direct contact with the works of God uh, in nature. Take your family away from the cities is my message. Ellen White was tasked by the Lord to write counsels on country living and the dangers of city life. He says it is never God's plan that his people should settle in cities where there is much or in constant turmoil. Turmoil here represents riots, strikes. There are so much pronounced in big cities. You hardly hear of such things in the open countryside. There is violence in the cities, terrorism in the cities. We today understand better uh, in the modern world. Uh, uh, Ellen White lived in the 1800s. She foresaw by the Spirit of God what was coming upon the cities of the earth. It says this brings confusion to the children. Those who are raising their children under such circumstances have a challenge because on the day of judgment, God says to each parent, where are the children I gave to you to form divine characters? What characters are your children forming in the cities where there is too much entertainment, pleasure, terminal confusion? And uh, she says, why not take your family to dwell in the countryside or in smaller places where you can manage to mold the character of your children? Think about this, friend, in the days that we are living in. This lockdown has taught me many things. God has revealed these great things to me. Brethren and sisters, it is time for us to pay heed to the counsel of the spirit of prophecy. Grow your own vegetables. Grow your own food supplies. This life of depending on the supermarket is not God's ideal. Hear what I'm saying clearly? It is not God's ideal. The devil has a purpose in crowding people in cities. For wherever people are crowded, human excitements come into play and people forget God. Sin is rife in the cities today. I want to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. God confused people by the Tower of Babel, but rebellion continued. And people went on to develop more cities. They came up Sodom and Gomorrah. Wherever people are crowded, it is the devil's purpose, and God is dishonored. Genesis chapter 13, verse 12 to 13 says, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked, sinners before the Lord exceedingly. You are aware of the story when Abraham and Lot uh, experienced a quarrel among their shepherds and they said, I think it would be better that we live apart. And Abraham said to Lot, if you choose to go to the east, I'll go to the west. If you choose to the south, I go to the north. Lot, instead of respecting his uncle Abraham, he decided to choose first rather than to say, Abraham, choose. So Lot lifted up his eyes in all the directions and he saw the cities of the plain. He didn't want to go to the mountain, to the countryside, and he decided with his wife to go and stay in the cities of the plain. The Bible says he pitched his tents towards Sodom, a bigger city. Finally, Lot ended up in Sodom, and the Bible says the Sodomites were so wicked before the Lord exceedingly. Lot decided to lured by financial advantages, capital city. Hoping to make more capital, he decided to defy God's plan. 
and he settled in Sodom with his family. There are many families today who know the will of God, but they have decided to go for capital than to go for sanctification. They've decided to go for money. They've decided to go for, for wealth and honor and put away God's counsels. These families will pay a good price like Lot. Abraham said, if you go Sodom, I go the opposite direction. So Abraham settled in the country, in the plains, where there were few people there and he had more time to worship God, to hear the voice of God. And we read in the book, in the Bible, that God and his angels frequently visited Abraham in the countryside. And Lot in Sodom was attracted by the lights, the glitter of the city, the entertainments there. He went into Sodom. But sin cannot go unpunished. Sodom became so excited, the Sodomites and the people of Gomorrah, that they started to eat and drink and forget the Lord because of the entertainments and the sinfulness in their environment. And they came up homosexuality in those cities, Sodomy, and God was so offended that he came down to judge. He passed through Abraham's place in the countryside and told him his mission in going to Sodom. Abraham pleaded for his relative Lot in the city. I want to thank God, all people who have served God effectively. If you read the account of the Bible, is it John the Baptist in the wilderness? Is it Moses in the wilderness? Is it Jesus in the retreat of Galilee? God's worth is Elisha from the countryside. Elijah in Gilead, places of unrenown. They had more time to speak to God and deceived by the devil by the entertainments of the city. Today, people are becoming less and less concerned about God and are becoming more worldly because they have settled in places which God never ordained. And so let's read together. Genesis um, chapter 19 verse 15 says, And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. But his wife looked back behind her, and she became a pillar of salt. The angels left Abraham. Abraham said to the Lord, uh, to the Lord, Lord, if you find 50 people in the city of Sodom who are righteous, will you destroy the city? And God said, I tell you the truth, Abraham, if I find 50 people, I will spare the city for the sake of the 50. And Abraham said, what about if you find 40? He was trying to come and say, what about if you find one family? He was concerned about his, his relative lot. God said, if I find 30 or 20, I will not destroy the city. Then God went his way. Brothers and sisters, today there is much wickedness in the city. Unfortunately, unfortunately, many of God's people have also joined the worldliness, the pleasures, the gaming, the sporting of the city, which diverts minds from God and even breaks the Sabbath. Most of these activities are done on the Sabbath day. We've got people who go to church half of the day, the latter part of the Sabbath, they are in the city, in the glitter and uh, eating places, enjoying themselves. They no longer keep the Sabbath for 24 hours. These are the dangers of the city. So the angels went because of Abraham. God told them, go and rescue Lot. Lot loved the city that when the angels told him, he, he lingered in the city. There are many people today who are saying, ah, men of God, this idea that we should not dwell in the cities and go to the country, is it literal or symbolic? I've heard people say that. They are so uh, drunken with city life to the point that they doubt God's word. They want to linger in the cities. I know of an example. I won't say names, but uh, a, 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 a mother who refused to come out of the city when the husband had got a job outside the city, she preferred to remain in the big city. And the husband lived in a small city where he was employed. But uh, sooner or later, their marriage broke because they were living apart. 
The Bible says, Mrs. Lot loved the city. And when the angels gave instruction that when you leave Sodom, please don't look behind. Go ahead straight into the plains, escape the judgment. Her heart was in the city. She moved bodily outside, but her mind was in the city, the pleasure of the city. Eating houses, the friends, worldly friends who were there where sodomy was practiced. She was tempted to look back and the judgment of God fell upon her. Lot lost his wife because of a wrong choice of a place where he chose to set up a home. Today, my brothers and sisters, there are people who used to be happy together in humble dwellings. But when they move to big cities where there are temptations, some have already divorced. Some have remarried the men of the city who have capital. But I want to say to such couples, the Lord is coming soon to judge. The Lord is coming to soon to judge and is going to say, where is the wife I gave you? Where is the husband I gave you? Where are the children I gave you? Some have sacrificed their families for capital in capital cities. Consider Mrs. Lot and consider Lot and the, what happened to him when he defied God's plan for a family homes. He says now, the children of Lot were also corrupted by the mold of Sodom. When mother turned into a pillar of salt, they went with their father, but they slept with their father. They deceived the father, made him drunk, and slept with him. There came the Moabites out of this ungodly uh, sexual intercourse between father and daughter. Where did the daughters of Lot learn these tricks of making people drunk before they could sleep with them? It was Sodom. Do you know, friend, that your children know more evil things than you do what they are learning from the cities around them? If you dwelt in a better place, you could have more control on your children. Some pe parents think children are going to school when they are in the city center playing computer games. Friends, Jesus is coming. It's important for us to pay heed to the councils, to uh, live in places where we can have control of our children, especially outside the big cities. And so Lot lost his family. The angels had to literally drag him out of the city. He had no time to pack his property because the judgment hour had come. I want to assure you the truth. My friends, there is a time when you will not be able to pack out your things in the big cities. We are told in these days it is better to make investments outside the city because people will leave the cities in flight. When it is too late, the judgments of God are coming to cities that have become like Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 13 verse 12 says, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, but Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and he ended up in Sodom. And um, I know some people who are planning to leave humble dwellings to go and crowd in the cities. It may appear as a sign of status according to men's standards, but according to God's standards, those who pay attention to his counsels will be blessed. They will preserve their families and have more contact with the family and the bond together and have more quiet times of worshiping. Evangelism, I'm quoting the book, The Pain of Inspiration. Ellen White wrote a book called Evangelism in 1903. It's God Show Day, the last day events. The Lord, it says Evangelism, page 79. The Lord could, sorry, Lot could have preserved his family from many evils had he not made his home in this wicked, polluted city. And all that Lot and his family did in Sodom could have been done by them even when they lived in a place some distance away from the city. Enoch walked with God, and yet he did not live in the midst of the city, polluted with every kind of violence and wickedness. You see now, the pain of his inspiration is counseling us that. If Lot had pitched his tents away from Sodom, 
He could have worked whatever business was doing in Sodom, but retreating to his home. And then Enoch is given as a contrast. In the plains of the valley before the floods, people started to congregate in cities. Enoch dwelt in the mountains. He only came into the cities of the plain to warn them about the impending judgment. Then he could withdraw to the quiet home in the countryside. Cities, we are told by the pain of inspiration, are supposed to be worked from outside. We should go and work in the cities and then withdraw to uh, our homes in the periphery or in the peri-urban areas where we have control of our homes, we have communion with God, where we can have control of our children. But modern day are not listening to God. There are cities with 10 million people, <laughs> 8 million people, crowded, unhygienic, uncouth, and every sin is practiced there. This is now inviting the judgments of God. Sodom and Gomorrah were judged. The fire of God rained from the heavens and burnt everything to ashes. Nobody escaped the judgments of God. And we are told to remember these judgments because they are coming again, and I believe they've already started. See how trouble is starting in big cities. The Lord is giving us a warning, especially his remnant people. Do not continually ignore the counsels. You are going to pay a good price if you don't obey the Lord. In the New Testament, Jesus gives us the shortest scripture that is found in the Bible. Luke chapter 17, verse 32 he simply says, remember Lord's wife. We who are faced by the coming of the Lord and uh, the climaxing of the great controversy, Jesus says to you in the UK, he says to you in America, in China, in Russia, he says to you in Namibia, in South Africa, wherever you are, remember Lord's wife. She was a mother who loved city life. She was a mother who was prepared to disobey God because of city life. Her heart was now in the city and not with God. She would not have time, quality time, to mold the characters of her children. In the countryside, the city molded the character of her children. And she looked back and became a pillar of salt under instant judgment. This is a warning to all mothers and sisters who are so addicted to modern life in cities at the expense of God's counsels. Some are prepared to have their homes broken than to leave the city. There are those who actually force husbands to dwell in the city when the husband says, let's obey God. This is not right. Many mothers and wives are going to face the judgment like Mrs. Lot because of worldly mindedness, because of the love of the cities, modern day cities, and the sins that are practiced in the cities. Remember Lord's wife. She serves as a beacon and a warning of the final judgments that are coming. I hope and pray that you and your family agree and pray about it and find a place where you can worship God freely and bring up children who are ready to go into the kingdom of heaven. I'm afraid to say Many are breeding children for hellfire. This is what the devil wants. Let's read on. The judgments of God are coming to modern cities. What, was, what does the book of Revelation teach us? It seems God is something against cities because it was never his plan for his people to live in the cities. Revelation 16 verse 17 as John was shown the coming drama of the end. It says now, in verse 17, and the seventh angel poured out his veil into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple in heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And the great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. The cities of this world, their days are numbered, according to the book of Revelation, because they've become hotbeds of vice 
immorality, iniquity, that if God does not destroy modern cities in the day of judgment, in the resurrection, the people of Sodom will say, God, you were not fair. Why did you destroy us? Because these end time cities have become even worse than we were. And John beheld the cities of the nations falling down, no stone left on top of another, because the Lord is coming to give great punishment and judgments to the cities of this world. Friend, I want to warn you, believe the prophets, the prophet, the prophecies of God and his counsels and make right decisions before probation closes. The book, Country Living, page seven, 7, says, The ungodly cities of our world are to be swept away by the, the besom of destruction. In the calamities that are now uh, befalling, um, sorry, I'll repeat that, you edit it out. Um, count, sorry. Councils on Country Living, page 7, says, the ungodly cities of our world are to be swept away by the besom of destruction in the calamities that are now befalling immense buildings, skyscrapers, <laughs> large portions of the cities. God is showing us what will come upon the earth. She's saying God is giving us a sample of the judgments that are to come. So many a time in the headlines we hear how hurricanes have ripped a building or earthquakes an entire flood collapsed in the um, dwellers of the flats, I mean, uh, judged or killed, and none escaping or others buried under the rubble. It says these are just a glimpse of what is coming. The cities of the world shall totally fall under the judgments of God because of the vice practiced in them. As God dragged Lot out of Sodom, he is appealing to his people now that they may locate in places where they will be safe from the coming wrath. Now, somebody says, when do we leave the cities? We are touched by this message. You know, God has not left us to guess. He has given us a proper signal to take action and leave the cities. I will draw you to the pen of inspiration that you may understand the book Country Living, written by Ellen White. I, I always quote Ellen White because she's the best commentary on the scriptures. She's a prophetess of God who has shown uh, events of the last days, and she wrote in the book Country Living, page 32, as the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies was a sign for the flight uh, to the Judean Christians to leave and go to the mountains, so the assumption of power on the part of the United States, she says, our nation, she was American. The assumption of power of, of our nation, the U.S., in the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath or enforcing National Sunday law uh, will be a warning to us. It will then be time to leave the large cities preparatory to leaving smaller ones for retired homes in secluded places among the mountains. So Ellen White is simply saying, as Titus withdrew from besieging Jerusalem. It was a sign for God's people to leave Jerusalem. Some people said, ah, Titus has gone away. He will never come back again. But when the last Christian went, they saw his withdrawal as a sign from heaven. When they went out to the mountains, when the last man was out who feared God, Titus suddenly came back and besieged Jerusalem in AD 70 and they butchered everybody until they destroyed the Jerusalem temple. And the blood flowed like rivers. So we're told the signal for the remnant people is the legislation of a forced Sunday sacredness in the United States. When the U.S. revises its constitution to put the national Sunday law in its constitution, Ellen White, the prophetess, was told, this is a warning from God. It is then the time that God's people must leave the large cities. But some people are not preparing. They don't even have a home. They're not saving for, for that effect. Some people be stranded and we have no way to go. Friend, if you are a believer, 
in the prophecies of God. Do not make uh, haphazard decisions. Stra plan strategically. We are told the signal for us to live is the legislation of the international uh, national Sunday law beginning in America. It will spread to the whole world. Our eyes and the eyes of all prophetic students are upon the U.S. Country Living, page 20 says, A crisis is soon to come upon us in regard to the observance of Sunday. The Sunday party is strengthening itself in its false claims. And this will mean oppression to those who determine to keep the Sabbath of the Lord. Uh, if in the providence of God we can secure places away from cities, the Lord would have us do this. There are troublous times ahead of us. The Sunday movement is making its way. People are lobbying to have Sunday uh, put in the constitutions of the nations and enforced. He says this will bring trouble upon God's honest Sabbath keepers. This is not symbolic. It's literal. Don't find some wise arguments to try and dismiss this truth. It is coming to pass. If, you are, if your eyes are open, you can see that the movements are already there. I'll continue reading. Country Living, page 9 says, In the testimony, sorry, in harmony with the light given me, I am urging people to come out from the great centers of population. Our cities are increasing in wickedness, and it is becoming more and more evident that those who remain in them unnecessarily do so at the peril of their salvation. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says. And she continues, and now instead of seeking expensive dwellings here in big cities, we should be preparing to move to better, I mean, to a better country, even a heavenly. Instead of spending our means in self-gratification, in display, in grandiose yes, mansions, we should be studying to economize, maybe sparing means to advance God's work. We believe that the cities of this world will be leveled to the ground, and God has given us enough warning. In harmony with the light given me, I am urging people to come from the great cities and ask God, and the Lord is going to help us. As we conclude, God's ideal is in the Eden home prepared for Adam. It was never his ideal that people should crowd in cities. You and I are witnesses to the outbursts of violence, terrorism, diseases in crowded places. Evangelism, the book Evangelism, page 78 says, as God's commandment keeping people, we must leave the cities. As did Enoch, we must work in the cities but not dwell in them. We must work in the big cities and other cities but not dwell in them. Enoch worked the cities of the, fly, of the plain from outside. Here is the counsel. Many are not willing to receive it. Many are willing to sacrifice salvation because of the glitter of the city. Many are putting means, finances, into the fashions of this world, in fashionable cars, dressing, fashionable houses, at the expense of their salvation, and not even advancing the cause of God. When God says, leave the cities, it will be difficult to leave these idols. Like Mrs. Lot, many will turn back thinking of their investments and idols. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again and again, the Lord has instructed me that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions for in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We need to raise our own food. We need sizable space. In a flat, you can't raise food. You depend on the supermarket. In a flat, you cannot eat natural foods, organic. There are lots of preserved preservatives in the foods that are eaten in the city. That corrupt our health and compromise our immune systems. Many people who are wise are now going for organic foods, which they grow themselves. It is your chance to make a decision with your loved one and ask God to help you. I want to conclude by this song. It touches me so much. It says now, 
when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all we will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet or will walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Obey God when he calls us to dwell in, country, in the countryside where there is space, where there are less populations, where we can worship God with our families. I hope you've been blessed by this presentation. I hope you are praying, taking it very seriously. I hope you understand that God is going to say to you, where are the children I gave to you? What character have they formed? Where is the husband I gave you? Where is the wife I gave you? Let us obey the Lord and trust him. He will take care of us. Shall we pray as we close this presentation? Heavenly Father, we thank you for counseling us, for giving us a straight testimony to make us wise unto salvation. We are witnesses today, Lord, of the disasters, the outbreaks of diseases, the crime, the drug addiction, the vice in the big cities where millions are crowded together, contrary to your word. I want to pray for my friends online who have heard this message. Help them, uh, help them to, uh, to listen to your counsel. May you order their steps as they make the right decisions. Give them a strategic exit. And Lord, we pray that you may save them and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, dear friends, for fellowshipping with us on the Show Me, Show Me God uh, presentation online on Facebook. Um, we are inviting you, friend, to subscribe to our Show Me God channel on YouTube and get more powerful uploads. You'll be the first one to be notified. Please hit that subscribe button and uh, be blessed. On our Facebook page, you can give us a thumbs up and like our page. We we'll meet again in the next broadcast this coming Sabbath, exactly at 10 a.m. God bless you. Show Me God Ministries. Advancing the Three Angels Message Digitally.